אני רוצה קודם להגיד תודה לסיימן למברט, שהוא אחת מה... שהמציא את התוכנית של ריאורג, ואני מאוד שמחה כאילו לדבר על זה כי אני... אני לא מכירה את המחסנים בכל המוזיאונים בארצות הברית כמו שאני מכירה, ב, סליחה, בארץ כמו שאני מכירה בארצות הברית, איפה שיש המון המון מוזיאונים קטנים והיסטוריקל סוסייטיז, שזה בעיקר, הריאורג uh, זה, זה ממש בשביל המוזיאונים הקטנים כאלה. אז אוקיי. Okay. אז קודם כל, בארצות הברית וגם בקנדה וגם באירופה, לפחות ב-UK, יש לנו קצת בעיה עם מוזיאונים. You know, התקציבים לא תמיד מה שאנחנו רוצים, אנחנו תמיד צריכים יותר כסף ממה שיש לנו, אז... אז עכשיו יותר ויותר אנחנו מנסים להראות למה המוזיאונים חשובים. So uh, this uh, document, which was a guide for museums, published by ICOM and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, argues that museums and cultural heritage sites are powerful assets for local development. They can create, uh, they, they inspire creativity, they can boost cultural diversity, Uh, they help regenerate local economies, they attract visitors, and they bring revenues. There's also increasing evidence that they can contribute to social co cohesion, civic engagement, health, and well-being. As אנחנו עובדים במוזיאונים, אנחנו יודעים כאילו שהם חלק מהתרבות שאפשר לא רק לשים את הרוחה וזהו. They can be, you know, central to the lives of, uh, of our communities. Uh, in the UK, they had a similar report, uh, and uh, so their report was called Empowering Collections, and it includes 11 recommendations for the museum sector. The first of which is that there should be a culture change in museums and collection practice, prioritizing collection projects that are user-led, with high levels of participation with museum users and communities. אז uh, זה אומר שאנחנו צריכים כאילו לפתוח את המוזיאונים שלנו ואת האוספים שלנו, שזה לא רק בא מהמומחים מלמעלה, שאנחנו שותפים פעולה גם עם הקהילות uh, שלנו. Um, this is uh, to, to make them more diverse, to make them more inclusive, to make them more interesting to the communities and more a part of the communities where, where they sit. In Barotot Abrit, Gamaya Mashu, another report that also talked about uh, um, museums being, uh, museums and libraries transforming uh, both people and communities by working, working together. So, אני לא צריכה כאילו להגיד לכם, אנשים שעובדים במוזיאונים, כמה uh, האוספים שלנו חשובים. ו... But we also know um, that they're, you know, important not just for research and for exhibitions. Uh, they're also important for cultural programming and also, again, to, to bring in uh, the, the community. that the core of what we do for a lot of it starts with, uh, with their collections. זה כאילו הכל בא מהאוסף. אבל אנחנו גם יודעים שיש כאילו מפלצת שמה, זה תמונות מכל מיני מחסנים בכל העולם. אז, so, you know, is this... יותר גרוע ממה שיש... אוקיי, טוב, מצוין. But it's not unusual. So these are, you know, extreme examples, uh, but we know that sometimes 
בהרבה מוזיאונים יש פשוט יותר מדי המחסנים המפוצצים uh, and so they struggle from neglect uh, and then כל, כל ה, כאילו, הדברים שאנחנו עוברים, what they say, front of house, you know, the activities, uh, and so we're not paying attention to what's going on behind, it gets left behind. <coughs> so, כשהמחסנים נראים כמו התמונות האלה, אי אפשר לעשות כל מיני פרויקטים חשובים עם האוסף. It's impossible to do an inventory, to do uh, digitization projects, to develop new exhibitions, to accommodate researchers and, uh, and other collection users, to organize activities for the public. Uh, and you can't bring in the community, you know, to, to see things. You know, אם אם את לא מוכנה לתת ציור למחסן שלך, כאילו, יש לך איזושהי uh, בעיה של הארגון. Um, so we know גם זה לא רק הבעיה בארצות הברית או ב-UK, קנדה, um, יש לנו כמה סקרים. Uh, so this is a worldwide problem. Uh, the problems include severe overcrowding, lack of support from uh, management for projects aiming to improve storage conditions. Often there is a lack of official responsibility for the collections and storage. Uh, there is often an inability to track and locate collections and sometimes like you saw even an inability to actually physically enter into the space. So uh, in this uh, Ikram UNESCO poll, there were um, 136 countries that responded, almost uh, 1,500 chuvot. Uh, uh, um, but you can see that uh, that there's still, you know, 50 machuz. It's a amrush is it's a fuf midai. 40 machuz amrush she ein ezra. Afachal lo yodea mi achrei. So uh, this, is, this is a problem all over. בארצות הברית לפני כמעט 15 שנה הם עשו הסקר הראשון כאילו על הבריאות האוספים בכל המדינת ארצות הברית ואז לפני שנה הם המציאו את התוצאות של הסקר השני. אז אנחנו ראינו ש... Uh, שזה קצת יותר טוב uh, בעשר שנים uh, האחרונות, אבל uh, עדיין 45 אחוז אמרו שהם ראו בשנתיים uh, האחרונות, האחרון, no. תודה, uh, שהיה איזשהו נזק שקרה בגלל uh, משהו שקרה במחסן. עוד מעט יצא סקר שהם עשו בקנדה, שזה אומר פחות או יותר אותו דבר, הם קיבלו כמעט 400 תשובות, ועוד פעם, יותר מ-50 אחוז אמרו שצפוף מדי, 50 אחוז אמרו שיש איזשהו נזק כשאנשים מנסים לגעת ולהוציא. פריטים, אז, אז אנחנו יודעים שזה גם בעיה שם בקנדה. אז אני אומרת את כל זה, שאתם כאילו תדעו שאני לא באה מארצות הברית להגיד שכולם עושים את זה לא נכון או משהו כזה, זה, זה בעיה ב, ב, בכל מקום. אז אז זו תמונה של המחסן של איזשהו מוזיאון קטן, אני אפילו לא יודעת איזה, אבל זה משהו שבעבודה שלי, ב- כאילו להיות היועצת למוזיאונים קטנים, בניהול אוספים ובשימור, אני רואה כל הזמן. אז, 
הגענו ל... ל... המצב שהיו אנשים שרצו ל- לעשות משהו, uh, לפטר את הבעיה קצת. So what does the reorg method do? Reorg divides uh, uh, storage problems into four different components. So יש את הניהול, יש את המבנה, יש את האוסף עצמו, ויש את הריהוט והציוד. The goal of dividing it up into these four different uh, components is uh, to make it easier to pinpoint where the problem is. And it can be in all four or it can be בעיקר באזור אחד. So they're all interconnected. So Reorg was uh, developed by, by Ikram. Uh, which is the International Center for the Study and Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property in Rome, with the support of UNESCO. Im kasef me'arotzot abrit, lifnei she'akol alach la'zazel shama, v'ekhlatnu she'nachnu lo nitrom yoter le'UNESCO. Az, avaz ze etkhil, ממש כשיצא את ה-Heritage Health Index, הסקר הזה מרכזי בארצות הברית, ואנחנו הגענו לאיזשהו מקום שהבנו שזה באמת הבעיה בארצות הברית. So, uh, מה שאתם רואים פה זה הם הביאו ארבעה אנש, אנשים מכאילו כל אזור בעולם, uh, so that it would be like representative of, uh, of all the, the different uh, regions of the world. So uh, they started with a task force that worked on identifying the steps involved in reorganizing storage areas. כל אחד שהם הזמינו עשו איזשהו פרויקט שיפוץ במחסן או reorganizing their, their storage. Um, the goal was to help uh, institutions and museums, also small, especially in developing countries, with limited resources. Uh, nobody has a, אין מספיק כסף, אפילו למוזיאונים גדולים או קטנים. So the, the whole goal of this is להיות מאוד פרקטי. אז מה יצא מהשיחות האלה? זה נראה כמו זה. אז you can see זה קצת מסובך, but these were all the steps that everyone identified as going into uh, a reorganization project. Um, things about uh, how do things come in? How do we find new space? Uh, all of these, but You can see the colors here. שהם התחילו כאילו להתחלק into these four different שלבים. So you have management, again, building and space, collections, furniture, and small equipment. Then the goal was to simplify it, and now it looks like this. שזה יותר טוב מ... So Reorg now has four shlavim, uh, four phases uh, that go from uh, the next stage is the, uh, the storage condition report, uh, then developing an action plan to actually implement your project as a tochnit pula lechsun and then the, the actual final implementation phase. So the first phase focuses on creating the best possible conditions for a successful reorganization. You want to ensure that you have a successful team with the right skills and the right equipment to be able to get the job done. So you see here some of uh, the people that you'll need as, um, you know, uh, you'll need to do like a, an inventory of skills. So who are the people that control the information 
or the equipment or things that uh, you need and bringing them into the, the team. Uh, you'll want to have some space that you'll, you know, identify space that you can work in. Uh, if you have floor plans, uh, if not, you might want to, you know, start to draw something even very simple on a, you know, piece of uh, graph paper. So the first, uh, the first bits all go in towards uh, identifying the, the team and, and tools. The second uh, is the, the, the storage condition report. Uh, which focuses on documenting and identifying the underlying issues uh, that are putting your collections at risk and what is preventing access and why. So here you're looking again at those uh, four different components of what, what uh, you know, identifying what is the, the problem. The third phase involves taking that list of the, the, um, the problems and turning them into a realistic action plan that is based on clear objectives. And then the fourth phase, again, is implementing the plan. So what do we mean when we talk about uh, what makes good storage? As any mevina, shelo kol achad iskimu imze. It's Israel, afachelo, you know. As we yeshavti sham ima, achshav ima kol asichot. As ani lo mer she she kol achad tzarich laskim im kol devar po. Avad zema she riorg, you know, ma she mechlitu as zeh standardi. So. Uh, so, one qualified member of staff is in charge of storage. Stein, uh, the storage room contains only collection objects. But, um, Shalosh, separate spaces are dedicated to the support functions, uh, office, workroom, storage equipment, other materials, non-collection items. No objects are placed directly on the floor. Uh, every object has a designated location and storage and can be located within three minutes. At a, at a, at a dvarim, using whatever your finding aids or your system is. Shesh, uh, every object can be ex, um, accessed without moving more than two other things. Odpam, im se shalosh, basada, aval kilu shalotrachim bemet lachfor bakol madaf o aron limso at a dvarim. Sheva, um, objects are arranged by category. Shmona, uh, key policies and procedures exist and are applied. Tesha, the building and storage rooms offer adequate protection for the collection. In Mayim Shezromim Kopam She Yoregeshem. Uh, 
and that every object is free from active deterioration and ready to be used for the museum's activities. As, uh, so, you know, working with the Mishamrim so that uh, when you take something out, so these are the, the 10 standards by which reorg is measured. Everyone will have uh, strengths and weaknesses, but this is, uh, these are the, the goals that they set. Okay, we're going to talk about Stein. Uh, שתיים זה שהמחסן, שיש רק אוספים במחסן ומספר חמש שאפשר למצוא את הפריטים בתוך שלוש דקות. So we have, um, so reorg now has, so the four components and then we have the four phases and then we have the 10 quality criteria. As ma'achshav. So, ze efo she mitchilo ba'al paim v'shmone, ve'al paim v'achat esrei yatsa ha'atar of Rishon, and it launched all of this information to the public. זה היה באנגלית וגם צרפתית וגם ספרדית. ולפני שנה, אם uh, the Canadian Conservation Institute, CCI, אקרם ו-CCI, אימצו uh, um, את, ה- את ה-revised version, את האתר החדש, and um, you can download from the, the new website uh, כל המחברות האלה. זה עדיין באנגלית ובצרפתית, בספרדית, פורטוגזית עכשיו, ויש עוד כמה שפות בהמשך. So, the first uh, thing that you do, if you are thinking about a reorg project, אפילו אם לא, if you want to get uh, support from uh, מנהלים, או כאילו להבין איך המחסן שלך, uh, how you perform on these 10 quality criteria, they have uh, what's called the self-evaluation uh, tool. So it's like a report card, uh, and that you go through, יש בערך 40 שאלות, ואז בסוף יש את התוצאה, כמו במבחן. אז כאילו פה, in your collection, in one of the, the four components, this is uh, one question. Your object can be retrieved with limited handling of other objects. And Achno Amarno Mikodem two two objects. So if you can't get to your object at all, Mikoblim Efes Nikudot. If uh, you have to handle a, you know, a few things uh, to get to your Prit, Shtem Nikudot, you have to handle four. Um, uh, Four nikudot if you have to handle more than two objects, and uh, a maximum of two objects must be handled, uh, you get six points. So once you've done the whole report card, you get uh, you can see where you fall, and it's m- based on sort of a you know a dom lotov tov okay ve yorok yofi. Uh, so you can sort of see, even at a glance, very quickly how well you're performing. And again, uh, you have here, this is your management category, uh, your building and space category, your collection category, and your furniture and small equipment. So you can score green in one, red in another, and somewhere you know in between. So if you're interested in more of the information about reorg, there's uh, um, three volumes uh, that, that include all of the information that will apply to, you know, uh, to these projects. So the first uh, is, uh, um, is the workbook. 
and inside there are checklists uh, that have step-by-step -step instructions. The second uh, book has the, the worksheets with uh, forms and templates that help you figure out uh, how much space you have, how much space you're using, how much space you may need in the future. Um, there are 10 forms that will help you sort of capture the information about what your storage is now. Uh, so this one is, uh, looks at um, where is the collection both inside and outside storage, whether objects are inside cabinets uh, or other kinds of shelves or units or whether they're on the floor. And it helps, uh, helps you start to estimate the amount of space that you would need and how you might be able to reorganize and group certain kinds of objects. The third uh, workbook includes resources that are specific to certain cases and that, you know, is like the uh, uh, extra information that will help you go deeper into some of the issues um, if, you, if you're interested. So in this uh, notebook, you have the um, different ways to estimate uh, floor space by pallet, by cabinet, shelves, drawers, uh, um, compactorium. Uh, and then also a lot of um, terrific information about um, uh, uh, why is wood not good? Why are some plastics okay and other plastics not? Um, and so a, a lot about archival materials and what is good to be using with objects and, and what not. Um, so this is what the, the new site looks like uh, with the new address. The, I think the old website is still active. So um, if you go and you Google Ikram, reorg, uh, and you see the old site, you want to be seeing this, uh, this logo here to know that you're in the, the new site. And you'll see here, the, over here, this uh, self-evaluation tool is uh, the first place. And here you have the different, uh, the workbook, the worksheets, and the additional resources, the three, um, three there. So in addition to all of this information that's on the, the website, there's a lot of other information to, uh, to help. Yeshlem playlist by YouTube. Um, it has videos showing the implementation of reorg projects in other countries, recordings of uh, various reorg conferences and seminars. Uh, and soon, there will be five tutorial videos by different uh, uh, reorg uh, projects in Canada uh, to show how they designed and built some of the nice uh, solutions that they, that they created for their own storage. As Koze Arutsa YouTube Shalem. They also have a Tumblr site. Um, so Tumblr is a mini blog, and you can just scroll down and sort of see all of the pictures of different solutions. Again, Shanashim Asul Bemachsanim Shalem. So these are all things that uh, were not specialized equipment, did not take a lot of money, all things that you can buy from the local uh, home center, you know, hardware store. Uh, and build, you know, very, very simply. And then, if you find uh, something that you like there, then another site that can help you is uh, a site that uh, I'm in charge of for the American Institute for Conservation in the U.S. called STASH, which stands for Storage Techniques for Art, Science, and History Collections. So. On Stash, you can um, click on one of these, and it gives you information on like step-by-step -step instructions on how to build different kinds of boxes, uh, pillows, uh, uh, um, pallets, 
um, and, and things like that. Gum, yes, at the Facebook page. So there's uh, additional information and links there. And if you would like to hear Simon, uh, one of the uh, creators of, of uh, Reorg, um, you can go to the Connecting to Collections Care website, which is also uh, a website from the American Institute for Conservation. And um, there is a one hour lecture where Simon explains a lot of uh, what Reorg is. And then if you are really excited about it, uh, as Kiloa Arta Shereti Lachem Achshav Se Ayal Echinam, Gam Yesha the course, She Afrata Lakha, but the so the course has Shizekvar Nigmar, but it's a Afshar Lakshivle Kola the Zayamuklat. So there's six webinars. Uh, and so some of it goes over the what is reorg and the fundamentals, and it walks you through. So the, the idea was that each, uh, every couple weeks you would have an assignment and you would be able to work your way uh, through. Uh, there's also, if you do the course, uh, um, other you know, assignments and handouts and things that you can, uh, can access. Aside from Reorg, I also just want to say on the Connecting to Collections Care site uh, and on AIC's YouTube channel, there is a huge amount of information. Uh, generally, they're one to one and a half hour webinars on all sorts of topics uh, relating to Shimor, Vishakhzor, Vanyul, Osafim. Uh, a lot of things, the most popular ones are. Uh, more on registration and management topics and digitization topics. So uh, all of this is available for free. If you go to YouTube and go to American Institute for Conservation and then click on playlist and then you'll see there's a connecting to collections care playlist and you can go through um, the, I think it's uh, hun over 150 different uh, videos. So there's a lot of good information out there that's uh, free and uh, available. So we know that there have been um, 146 different museums in 30 countries uh, that have already done a reorg project. Some of them have been what they call the national programs, where in that country, museum people from museums all over that country came worked in one museum for a week to do a reorg project so that then they could go back to their museum. You know, so I just want to show you a few pictures about the, the one that I was uh, uh, involved in. The, most of the time reorg projects are anywhere from three to five days. We did ours after the course was part of the course. There were people who took the course online and not came, but people who came to the Kenes of the American Institute for Conservation came and helped us. So that was before. In the past, we didn't have to come. There were all kinds of things that were not part of the course. Uh, Okay. 
וזה סיימן מ-Canadian Conservation Institute, וזאת היא ליסה גולדברג, שגם uh, הייתה אחת מהמרצות? מה, מרצות uh, של הקורס. אז כאילו, uh, ארבעתנו היינו שם uh, יום לפני, ואז היו הרבה שיחות טלפון <laughs> וכל המיילים, אז כאילו, זה לא שזה היה איזשהו קסם שפתאום, you know, עשינו פוף וזה יצא ככה, אבל בעיקר, with 20 people, a lot of planning, and one day, all of that work was able to get done, because we were organized and had used all of the tavlot, we had the floor plans, you know, when things changed, במשך היום זה לא יצא בדיוק איך שחשבנו כשנכנסנו היום לפני, אבל, you know, זה היה הצלחה גדולה. זה היה the Maritime Museum of New London, Connecticut. אז זה היה... בגלל שזה היה יום אחד, ידענו שאנחנו צריכים לבחור מוזיאון uh, שעם אוסף די קטן, זה היה פחות מאלף uh, פריטים. אז... זה נותן סדר גודל. כן, לא, אז uh, זהו, אז כאילו, אבל עכשיו אני אראה לכם כמה, כמה uh, מקומות uh, אחרות. So here you can see before and after. For some of these, הם קיבלו תרומות ממדפים ודברים כאלה. אנחנו גם קיבלנו מהום דיפו וכמה ו- חברות. אז uh, הנה זה בצ'ילי, <coughs> לפני ואחרי. אז uh, בסין. <coughs> זה בהודו. <coughs> איך אני אחזור? אז uh, באלג'יריה, ניגריה, אוקיי. So you can see each of those projects was, uh, was a huge improvement for those institutions and each of them involved training people from all over their country to go back to their institutions and do this work uh, themselves. So the reason to do a reorg project, um, I hope is obvious, but some of the, the uh, opportunities that come out of it are very interesting. So these are some of the things in, in Canada. In uh, this museum in Canada found Uh, 400, what we call the found in collection things, you know, pritim shenachnu lo yidi mi'efo mbao, ain shum informatia. So there was no documentation, no status, no record. Hem samu kol advarim ka'ele, ve hem ekimu tarucha, which is called look what we found. Ve hem izminu et ha'kila lavo, la'azor elem, ladat ma'ze. This museum in India organized a drawing competition for students, and the winners received a behind-the-scenes VIP tour to the new Mahsan. Uh, this museum in Canada used a gallery space as its swing space while they were working. When they took everything out, they closed one of their galleries, uh, and, uh, but instead of hiding it from the visitors, they used it as an opportunity to show all the important work that's going on and what they were doing behind the scenes. They also organized storage tours and featured found in collection objects on their Facebook page, which led to several um, objects being identified by the, the community. Um, this institution in Canada also didn't have a lot of uh, extra space, so they had to empty all of their contents of storage into one of their galleries, and they used it as an opportunity to invite artists to create works of art inspired by the collection. Uh, and they organized various workshops, including one on artwork documentation. So what were some of the, the big lessons that, uh, that um, all of these reorg projects have, uh, have, have learned? 
So one is that simply from tidying up, the reorg projects are an opportunity for people to learn new skills, to learn from each other, uh, to strengthen team spirit, boost motivation and confidence. אני אגיד כאילו בריאורג שאני עשיתי עם הצוות, היו כמה משמרים, היו הרבה אנשים, היו כמה אנשים כאילו מהקהילה, לא כל אחד היה מישהו עם רקע במוזיאונים. So some people, מי שהיא הזמינה את הבעלה, הוא, היה לו גב חזק והוא בעיקר סחב דברים. So, but it was uh, an opportunity to, to bring lots of people in and, and give them some new skills, teach them how to roll, teach them how to handle. Uh, if you're planning a reorg and you think it's going to take two days, double the time. Uh, however long you think it's uh, probably add on a little bit more. Uh, lesson number three was to be flexible and adapt as needed. So um, even if you try your best to, to document everything in your you know, condition report, there's still a lot of unknowns. You start taking things out, you discover all sorts of things. Uh, in ours, we, real, we knew that the, the um, Hatikra was, uh, was curved, so we wouldn't be able to get things in at the end. One part we didn't realize that there was a radiator. As lo yachalnu l'sim at aron she'chashavnu. So you adapt and be flexible as you move on. Um, one of the things was also that, uh, that many people feel that you should do the inventory first and then do your reorg. In many of these smaller institutions, they don't have uh, an actual inventory knowing So in this case, if you do your reorg first, it helps you then be able to do your inventory afterwards, that you can actually access things, you can physically uh, get to them. If you can't touch and find your things without moving things around and potentially doing damage, uh, your reorg should come first. Uh, and then lesson five is that the swing space, you need some extra space to be able to work, to, to organize. And then the, the, um, in terms of organizing, the way reorg uh, does it is we are used to thinking of our objects as uh, object uh, types. Telephonim, matpasot, uh, you know, as, as what they are. But in reorg, they, we want you to think of things as how, how you would store them. Big stuff, small stuff, heavy stuff, flat stuff. So here, once again, um, this is all in the workbooks and the worksheets, but there are these 12 object categories. So you have things that are um, heavy or voluminous, some of support themselves, other things that, uh, that don't. Some things that can be rolled, some things that need to be stored flat. So this will not work for everyone if your curator says, my stuff has to be here, I want to see all of my stuff here. But the idea is to maximize your storage space by putting things that, together that need the same kinds of storage and same kinds of uh, conditions. So. I'll just show you a couple of examples with the last few minutes. Uh, so here are you know, examples of what would be extra heavy or extra voluminous, uh, you know, things like airplanes or, or big, uh, big uh, sculptures. Long objects that are not self-supporting. Um, so uh, you know, things like implements or long weapons or things that can be rolled. So on each of the, the workbooks, uh, on the um, Tumblr page and uh, the, the stash page, there are different solutions for different things that you can do for each of these uh, categories. Uh, one of the things, uh, one of the, the last couple of, of lessons, people think their storage is, is full at 30%, but you can actually get 50% uh, 
and still be able generally to safely move around. Uh, another lesson is that every museum seems to have far more textiles than they ever think they do. And the last uh, lesson is that we try not to let better be the enemy of good. That um, sometimes you'll see here in the middle, they uh, made boxes out of some old posters and, uh, and storage materials. It's not archival material. It's not maybe what uh, we want in, you know, in the end, but sometimes it's you know, just moving some steps forward is already a big uh, accomplishment. So this is one of the things that one of uh, our volunteers came up with to store all of these long things that had been in a pile. 